arrow pushing mm -hmm. in my head and saw that there were also like that it worked out that way as well because if you push these down and then go like that you're going to have a minus charge on this end as well. I think that's an excellent explanation. That's right. I think that's very good. So you are proving yourself superior to all the students I was criticizing who never draw resonance structures unless someone tells them to. So that was good. So you drew a resonance structure there. So that's right. Another way to explain why this is why this is not basic and this is, is to draw the other resonance structure. Well, yeah. So there's another resonance structure that looks like this. We can move these electrons over here and those electrons over here. And then we would get a resonance structure that looks like this. And this clearly shows that this is the basic nitrogen and this is not a basic nitrogen over here. I think when your instructor explains this in class, in this particular case, you would probably use the aromaticity explanation. So it's good to know that. But the resonance explanation is a good one too. OK. Well, just for your notes, you could just write down that this is the basic nitrogen. But you could easily be asked to explain why that is. Now we've gone through the aromaticity explanation and also a resonance explanation for that. pH, a pH of 1, how do I have to fix this to make this look right? If we're at a very low pH, we would expect to protonate the side chain. And how should we draw the protonated side chain? Looks good. The key thing is just to remember this is the nitrogen that protonates, not this one, because this is the one that has the lone pair that was not participating in the aromatic in the aromatic overlap. And the whole module would have what plus two charge? Let's see, at a very low pH, that's right, the net charge would be plus two. And then if we started gradually raising the pH, we would strip off three protons one at a time. If we started gradually raising the pH, we would start stripping off one proton after another until three protons had disappeared. Okay? All right, so now we've finished the group on, notice that this, these were all part of the amino-containing group, or at least they all had nitrogens anyway. But notice that there are very different types of nitrogens. Some nitrogens are basic and some nitrogens are not basic, depending on the aromaticity and the resonance forms. So it's this one, right, just to make sure, the one not connected. That's the basic one, that's right. This is the nitrogen who has a lone pair that's not part of the pi structure because this is the nitrogen that's already using its pi orbital for the pi bond. All right, shall we move on to the next ones? Also, if we could please get to pi. Just ah, okay. Well, um, then in that know, case. I think, I are you good? I can, can we not? Yeah, I think we can. Okay. Or maybe let's just, we don't even have to draw it out. We can just look at what would we be. All of these are actually acidic. So we'd be taking off hydrogens. Mm-hmm. In the first case, off of sulfur, correct? That's right. In the second case, nothing, okay. The third case, off of oxygen, off of an ox oxygen on the COOH. Right. What is that COOH? It's just a carboxy group. Right, so is it another carboxy group? That's right. So, so there, it's another carboxy group in the side chain. That's right. Yeah. Can we just do This would be aspartic acid Great. as and a structure for aspartic acid. So besides deprotonating this carboxy group, we could also deprotonate this carboxy group. And then glutamic acid. Just glutamic acid is exactly like aspartic acid, except it has one more carbon in the side chain. OK, and we know that here the COOH is not is um, a separate one in the side chain opposed to that other one, because there's no symbol, right? Like proline. proline yeah, only proline in the table did they show the entire amino acid. Everything else, they're just showing the side chain. That's right. So the COOH in the table for aspartic acid and glutamic acid is the side chain COOH. Great. Okay. We're ready for PI. 
let me warn you, it's easy to confuse glutamic acid and glutamine. Right. So don't confuse glutamic acid and glutamine. And, and it's easy to confuse aspartic acid and asparagine. In fact, you might want to draw little lines connecting those because those are going to be related. Notice how aspartic acid and asparagine are closely related in structure, and glutamic acid and glutamine are closely related. Maybe we won't have time to talk about that too much today, but those are similar but different. We don't want to confuse those. If you see GLU, GLU is not glutamine. It's glutamic acid. Right. I often make that mistake. Thank you. And a lot of times, yeah, he'll have like six of them in a row. Or mm -hmm. Right. That's right. So you're going to have to use these abbreviations to, to draw amino acids. Well. Oftentimes I get cocky and I think I can do it without looking at the table. But then oftentimes I'll look at this and think it's glutamine when it's really glutamic acid. So you have to watch out for that. All right. So yeah, well, we'll go into calculating the PI. Yes, please. What I've drawn here is a tripeptide. I've drawn a peptide that consists of three amino acids. Here we have a peptide with three amino acids. What's the basic backbone for peptides? The backbone, well, so to start with, we know that amino acid has a nitrogen, an alpha carbon, and a carboxy carbon. <coughs> nitrogen, alpha carbon, and carboxy carbon. However, as you guys might have already learned, in a peptide, what happens is that the carboxy end of one amino acid attaches to the amino end of another, of another amino acid. In a peptide, the carboxy end of one amino acid attaches to the amino end of another, which means that the carboxy carbon does, isn't the carboxylic acid anymore, because now it's connected to this, this amine end over here. In fact, what type of functional group is this now? An amide. That's very important. Peptide bonds are amide bonds. Peptide bonds are amide bonds. A peptide bond is just the bond between amino acids and a peptide. Well, that is an amide bond. Nevertheless, I'm going to keep calling this the carboxy carbon because it used to be the carboxy carbon. I'm going to keep calling this the carboxy carbon because when this was a separate amino acid, it was the carboxy carbon. So what's the backbone? Nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxy carbon. Again, nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxy carbon. And then again, did I make a mistake? Yes, yeah, the carboxy on the bottom there. So that is the reason why it's so important to know that, that chain of uh, order because it's very easy to get this wrong. So nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxy carbon. Nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxy carbon. Know, it doesn't go down. Nitrogen, alpha carbon, okay. carboxy carbon is how I should have done it. Nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxy carbon. Nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxy carbon. Nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxy carbon. Okay, how do we know that it wasn't carboxy on the bottom there? That's the side chain. How do we know this is the side chain? Yeah. Oh, well, I just drew that to be the side chain. But we know this is the side chain because it's a dead end. We know that this is part of the, the string because it's not a dead end. So the backbone is the part where there's not a dead end. So this is what we would call the C-terminus. And this is what we would call the N-terminus. By the way, remember it's always conventional to put the N-terminus on the left and the C-terminus on the right. It's conventional to put the N-terminus on the left and the C-terminus on the right. And I drew this wrong. I had the side chain drawn wrong a second ago. I should have included an extra carbon. Now, this is glycine. Glycine is when you have just a hydrogen on the alpha carbon. So this is glycine. This is aspartic acid. Aspartic acid is when you have a CH2 group and a carboxy group on the side chain. So this is aspartic acid. Is there anywhere where there's just a carboxy group like you had drawn it before? No, that's why I, I okay. couldn't leave it like that. That's why okay. that was a mistake. Thanks. And this is lysine. Four carbons and an amine group. 